Google Ads Placement Targeting is available for advertisers who are using campaigns utilizing the display and placement networks. Now, it sounds appealing to be able to handpick exactly where your ads are going to be shown, but it's not that specific. Yes, I will show you the options of where we can use placement targeting, but I really want to cover the nuances between using it for display and YouTube campaigns. And then we'll also cover why your ads may not be appearing on the placements that you have selected. As I just said in the intro, placement targeting is available for advertisers using campaigns utilizing either the display or YouTube networks. So I'm going to begin this demo by walking through the campaign setup because in certain scenarios, there is a clear difference on how placements work between display and YouTube. So let's go on over and create a new campaign. Click on new campaign. The first thing you have to do in a campaign setup is choose your campaign objective. So to start off, I'm just gonna choose website traffic. Make sure you have your goal selected, whatever it is in your account, and click continue. Next, we'll have to choose the campaign type. I'm gonna start off with display. Go ahead, update the campaign name information, but for now, I just wanna click continue. Start off by filling in your campaign settings, choose your location, language, dig in deeper, but I'm going to keep going until we get to the targeting section. That's where placement targeting is going to live. So I'm going to click next. I'm going to have to add in a budget. So there's something there. There's our bid strategy and here we get to targeting. So let's go ahead and add our targeting. And in my view, the bottom option is placements. Easy enough to find. But before we continue and go over the placement targeting options, I'm going to hop into a different tab. And then let's walk through a similar setup, but this time it'll be for a video campaign using YouTube. I'm going to click on the same objective, click continue. This time I'm going to choose the campaign type of video, continue through all of this. Now this campaign setup is a little bit different because I chose a different campaign type, but for now I'm just going to keep scrolling all the way down till we get to the ad group section. And then I'm going to click on advanced settings. And this is very important. And the biggest difference between these two types of campaigns, what this is essentially saying is that any campaign that runs a video action campaign with the goal of driving conversions, they can no longer add content targeting to video campaigns. This essentially wipes out the ability to add manual placement targeting for video campaigns if the campaign objective is sales, leads, or website traffic. If you have a campaign that has one of these objectives and it's been running for a long time already, check on the performance of those campaigns. Hopefully you've been doing it already, but starting this year, manual placement targets have been removed from those campaigns with the three campaign objectives I mentioned. If I go back up top for this video campaign, let me change the goal of the campaign draft. Yes, I want to leave. Let's choose campaign without a goals guidance. Still choose video. This option has changed from the video perspective. So I always used to create the custom video campaign. Now it's split between get views and efficient reach. I'm going to leave it as get views for now. Focus on people wanting to pay attention. I'm going to click continue, scroll all the way down. And then here under content, if I click on placements, the option to hand select placements is still there. So we still have the ability with video campaigns to hand pick where we would like our videos to be shown. But to me, it's kind of a clear indication as time goes on, we most likely will eventually lose this feature for video campaigns. Google hasn't said anything specifically, to me, it's just kind of the writing on the wall, and that's my guess. Before we jump into going over the targeting options that we see in front of us right now, I want to mention one thing. If your ad group is adding additional layers besides manual placement targeting, let's say you choose a couple placements, but you also want to add in a topic or two. Maybe you want to layer in some in-market audiences. You can do that. However, Google has the right to use any of the targeting options that you have layered within your ad group. It's not going to look at them all combined together. So in this case, if I add in a few YouTube channels as my placement options, but I also have a few in-market audiences as part of the ad group targeting, Google can show my display or YouTube ads to users just in those in-market audiences, even if they're not watching or seeing the ad on these specific placements. Now there is a thing in audience manager where you can create combined segments, add in multiple audiences together. The thing with that is that you cannot include placements within those combined audiences. So if I want hyper-focused manual placement campaigns for my clients, I'm just adding placements to my targeting options and nothing else. So now let's go over the options. But before we do that, let's type in a specific keyword. There you go, baseball. 
It's the perfect season right now, and I know we'll have options in all of them. But from here on out, I'm just going to go right down the line. We typed in baseball. They gave us options under each category, and the first one is going to be YouTube channels. And yes, even your display ads can show up on YouTube. So I just typed in baseball in there. If you just keep scrolling down, you will see that there are a lot of YouTube channels out there talking about baseball. If you feel that the options are too generic, just go ahead and change your keywords. But if I choose a specific YouTube channel, I'll just choose this first one here, then my ads could possibly appear on any video or video watch page that exist in this particular channel. But maybe when you're doing your research, you're finding out that there are only a few videos on a particular channel where you'd want your ads to appear. Not every single video of a YouTube page is going to be relevant. Well, if that's the case, then you need to head back and then look at specific YouTube videos. Now, since I typed in a generic keyword, it would take me a long time to go one by one. I'm gonna go up and X out of this because if you know the location of where you would like your ad to appear, you can paste in the specific YouTube video URL or video ID. I'm gonna grab a URL. Yes, I'm going off of the baseball topic and I'm just gonna paste in a specific URL. There it is, go to YouTube videos and I could select this one option. That's pretty much saying I only want my ads to appear. If it's in stream, it would be before, during, or at the end of while the video is playing, or possibly display could be overlaid or off to the side up top somewhere. Now understand that there's also competition. You're clearly not gonna be the only one. So if you choose a specific channel with a specific celebrity like this one, has a lot of views, odds are you're gonna be competing against a lot of people, so your ad might not show with this one option purely due to competition. So depending on your budget, you may not wanna be this hyper-focused right off the bat. Let me cancel out of this video option, X out of here, but now you know you can look at specific YouTube videos. For video lineups, I'm not gonna start off with a particular keyword. I know when I enter in baseball, it only gave us one option, but video lineups are the quote unquote newest form of placement targeting within Google, but they have been around for a couple of years. We see when you click on this option, depending on what you're trying to promote, you can see the first option will be popular content worldwide, and it doesn't break down any further. It's gonna be what's popular on YouTube right now, if you wanna focus on capitalizing on current trends on YouTube, or if you wanna get into Google's video partners. Now you remember for this particular video campaign, I choose to create a campaign without a goals guidance. This is the campaign goal option for YouTube that allows you to still turn off the display network. If you do that, you can't choose this option because video partners includes the display network. On the flip side, those video action campaigns that I talked about, if you do select one of those campaign objectives, you no longer can turn off the display network. So you would have this option. So if I close this one up, we can look at specific content for the United States. That's just my location, so that's why it's popping up first. And this is a way for you to try to get your video campaigns to show up in any content related to specific moments, topics, categories, that whole sort of thing, without having to go and try to handpick a bunch of channels, videos, shorts, and all that stuff. So if you want to try to be in front of any video content related to American football, you can click on it. There was the one baseball option that was showing up earlier. What happens if I go up and type in something else? There, I typed in video games. 33 video lineup options there. I choose the US one, and video games are broken up into specific categories. Now, depending on what industry you're in, you may not find something that's suitable for video lineups. It's definitely gonna be topics that are more popular, like you saw sports, entertainment, there's movies, cooking interests, so you kind of get what type of topics there are for video lineups. But for certain clients who have found exactly the type of topic that they're looking for, we have found these video lineups have worked better in engaging users than some custom segments and in-market audiences that are available. Let's X out of this. I'm gonna type in baseball again. Then we can look at websites. No longer just a placement option for display campaigns. Since I just mentioned that several video campaign objectives no longer let you turn off the display network from your targeting. So you can use website placements for video campaigns too. Now one thing that Google's planner used to do when creating a campaign was show which types of ad placements are available on each of these websites. We no longer get that information, which is unfortunate. So while I can still target all these websites, we don't know specific ad sizes or if it's just display ads or just video ads. So try to add as many as you can that are gonna be relevant but don't be totally surprised if you find out that your ads aren't appearing on certain placements. Could be that you just don't have the right ad format. From the display side, 
That's why making sure you have at least one response or display ad within the ad group is going to be helpful. For video, if they just don't have video ad placements on the website, there's nothing you can do about it. If you want to know what the placement looks like, I'm on a PC. I typically just highlight the URL, go up to another tab, place it in there, and open it up. There we see an ad up here. Plenty more ads popped up on the page. It's going to be up to you to find out if you like the ad space, is it visible, and will it help or potentially hurt your brand. Go back up to the campaign. All right, easy enough to search for websites. And let's look at apps. Pretty much the same thing. And since it's apps, you pretty much know what devices these placements are going to be on. Many more apps are starting to include video ads, especially the free apps. You know, you have to watch this video ad for a little bit before you can X out of it and continue your experience within the app. So yes, this will apply to video as well. But there you go. Look at the options. You get the name of the app and the developer of the app. So go on to the Play Store and do your research to see what the app truly is about and decide if you want to target it. And besides just apps, you will also get app categories. In this moment, there isn't a baseball app category. So if I X out of that, let's head back into it. You see they split it out between Apple and Google. Doesn't matter to me, but they are very high level categories. In my case, there wasn't anything baseball related. So if I scroll down, the closest I'm going to get is just overall sports. Now for this next example, I'm going to head back. I am going to highlight this particular section because what Google is telling us is that if you choose a specific website as a placement and that website has an equivalent app, your ad could possibly show up also on the app. Let's look at one example. If I go to ESPN, choose websites, and I'm going to add ESPN.com. Now if I go back, go to apps, there we see the official ESPN app. Now I'm not selecting it, but because I'm targeting the ESPN website, and Google knows that this is the official ESPN app, the ads I'm targeting for this website could also appear on the app placement as well. You could control it with your device targeting options within your campaign settings in most cases, but typically we'd like to have everything running first. You can always add additional exclusions later on, and we will show you how to do that. So if I X out of this, get rid of my options, there we see those are the six main placement targeting options we get with Google Ads. Now, I know in my first display campaign, you may notice this in the mix when you're building out your campaign, and that is optimized targeting. It's automatically going to be turned on. So this is essentially going to expand your targeting options based upon the original ones you have selected. So let me go back up and add some additional targeting as a YouTube channel. There we go. Target us, everybody. Put some ads on our channel. Give us some more money. But there we see now I can turn off optimized targeting. We really haven't seen any benefit from optimized targeting for our clients that are really focused on actions. We do have a video talking about optimized targeting. If you're not familiar with what that is, you could check that out here. But I did want to bring it up to know that optimized targeting could be used with your manual placement targeting unless you turn it off. Depends on how specific you want to get with placement targeting. All right, I'm not going to go through the rest of a campaign setup for a display or video campaign utilizing placement targeting. So I'm going to head back to the main campaign view and talk about how to review where your ads are actually being shown. So to look at the placement report, I wanted to use an actual client account so we can show you placements. Now, depending on what view you have, because certain experiences for Google ads are changing, the placement report could live in a couple different areas. The first might be under content. If so, you'll see an option for where ads showed. Now, this is one of the few accounts that we manage that has a different experience where they have a newer section where they combine insights and reports. You can see now our search terms are here, our auction insights are here, and they changed it a little bit. In this case, it's when and where the ad showed. In this case, I want to switch to where ad showed. And there we see default. The network is YouTube and display. If I open this up, you can choose just YouTube, just display. I'm going to leave it as both for now. Now here is showing us where our ad showed, and I'm looking at the entire account. So it's showing us everything from our audience-based targeting options and everything. This particular client is not doing manual placement targeting. Just want to call that out there. But if you are doing manual placement targeting, still check on this report. Because there are a few things I said earlier I want to stress again. If there is a lot of competition or, a place, or placements that you are choosing may not have the ad size or ad type that you've selected, you may see that some of your manual placements have zero impressions. If that's the case, you may need to circle back find some different targeting options, find some different placements if possible, and add them to your ad group. Now on the flip side, your manual placements could be running just fine. But as I also said earlier, if you add in additional layers or the website that you're targeting has equivalent apps, 
you may find that there are more placements within this report than you were expecting with the manual placement targeted campaign. So still check on your placements. You may find out I still have to remove all mobile app categories. If I close out of this, there we see the options where you can still adjust your columns, review the metrics that are still important to you, and you can also use this report to review any other campaigns that aren't using manual placement targeting, finding out what's converting already, and then consider adding those converting placements to a manually targeted placement campaign. If you're not happy with the placements where your ads are being shown, you can still highlight whichever ones that you don't want. In this case, I'll choose this one. If I click edit, I can exclude it from the ad group or campaign, and then you can head up onto your tools and settings and look at adding a placement exclusion list. I already have one set up here at the account level, but any completely irrelevant app, YouTube channel, display network placement where we don't want any of our display or YouTube ads to appear, we've begun for this particular account adding them to a list. It's going to cover all of our campaigns. We have more about placement exclusion lists in this video right here. You can check it out. But that is our updated video about Google Ads placement targeting. There are now clear differences between how it works for YouTube and display. But collectively, we are seeing the pattern with other Google campaigns that we're getting less control on how placements actually work. We don't have as many options for manually placement campaigns as we used to. And as I said earlier, I will not be surprised if that trend continues and we just lose more control. But while we have it, utilize it. Because if you can hand pick a website or a YouTube channel or a YouTube video where you know your target audience exists, then it's a must use targeting option in my opinion. If you have any other questions on how Google Ads placement targeting works or have any good or bad experiences you wanna share with the community, let everyone know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.